Hey traders, this is Blake Marr with Trader Summit, and I'm really excited to bring on Mr. Ben Maldonado. He's an independent investor, but he also, you know, he, he I think you just uh, launched a YouTube channel a while back, and uh, and it's good to see you, Ben. How are you? It's great to see you, Blake. Yeah, things are going well. I'm excited about the activity we're seeing in the markets because I think it's just the start, and uh, we're going to have a lot of good opportunities for traders. Now I'd be I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't say you know it's been a while since we spoke and last time uh, we spoke you look great you know it looks like you've 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 gotten in shape and I'm I'm really <laughs> excited for you, you look fantastic thank you I appreciate it but it's um, more to do what you do which is stay in shape don't get out of shape because it's harder to get back in shape but at least I did that <laughs> it's a grind you know it's a grind but you 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 have to do it right you have to do it. yes you breach fifty and it's like you get you get get moving. You get metabolism anyway. says goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Um, so uh, I, I I I was looking back at it, some of our notes, and um, you know, at the end of 2022, you're like, you you got to be long the dollar, and you got to be long gold. Now it's been a while since we spoke, uh, but obviously gold's broken out, and the dollar hasn't done too bad either. I mean, you know, the dollar may be questionable where we're at more near term, but overall the dollar has gone up, gold's gone up. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what you're seeing and how you're viewing the markets, because you've always been uh, in, in the camp that we're going through a big cycle in the market. You call it the epic cycle. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about what it is and why and, and what the long term framework of it is kind of looks like to you. Sure, sure. So the epic cycle is a, a 400 year cycle. So obviously this is not a day trading thing or a short term thing. It's a huge cycle where every time we have a new one, a whole sort of regime changes. And we are at the end slash beginning of an epic cycle. Like 2026, 2027 is when the new epic starts. And so what, what happens is the things that were supported and and sort of encouraged by the cycle right like by the the background frequency change and one of them is these sort of big uh large bureaucratic institutions that we've used to organize society will no longer be supported and part of what you and I have talked about on this on this program as well as me on uh, in other interviews is the, the first phase that we've completed is where people would begin to lose confidence in these institutions. And we've seen it, you know, in the news and in our day-to-day -day activities, whether it's the judicial system, the police, uh, the, the uh, uh, education system. I mean, it's, it's FBI, you know, has come up as people don't trust that or elections, people don't trust them anymore. Yeah, it's so, it's a bit it's a big social you know uh, uh, hot topic nowadays, and it absolutely is. And it and I think the good thing that I'm seeing is it's crossing political lines, right? It used to be you know only a certain faction of people with politics a certain way wouldn't have distrust in the government, and now it's sort of that trust is eroding across the political spectrum because the institutions are starting to fail. And then the phase that we're moving into now in 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027 is where they actually start failing and they can't deliver what they used to deliver. Well, you know, the, what, what you're painting for us uh, is, is really been just a very bleak outlook for the U.S. economy in the very near term. Um, but but is is it really? Do I need to batten down the hatches and and make sure I start stashing food? I mean, are we at that point? I don't I don't know that here in the U.S. we're going to experience like that level of of chaos. There is going to be certain amount of chaos, and the thing I'm I'm focused on next is sort of the election because I think, and if you think about it, no matter which side wins, the other side's not going to accept it. Yeah, you're right. And it's so going to be that, very How is that going to play out? It's going to be super divisive, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, you know, some of the things that I've read and some of the the other cycle stuff that people's work that I've looked at have talked about, you know, some sort of splintering or separating and we're already seeing that. You know, you go from one state, go from like California to Texas and it's like you're in two different countries. 
And so we're, and people are choosing to live in the places that align with their views. So maybe we see more of that without an actual, you know, like legal separation in the country where people just go to the places where the, the governing body, their views and their, their philosophies align with those people's views. Yeah. You know, I, I live in one of those states. I live in uh, the state of Arizona where, um, you know, you get, we've gotten a lot of people from uh, different parts of the West coast where they, they choose to live here so they can carry a sidearm and they don't have, didn't have to wear a mask and they didn't have to you know <laughs> do certain things, but you are seeing that divide. I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I was just in Texas and the mentality or the 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 um the the group think in in Texas is definitely much different when I was just in California a few Absolutely. months back. So you you definitely see that. And that's one of the manifestations of this the end of this cycle is this sort of splintering and and things moving from really large organizations to more local and more um individual based like where okay is the, me and a group of 20 people feel the same way. So we buy a plot of land and we're going to develop it and build our own little community. So smaller communities versus these big sort of uh, massive organizations. And one of the interesting things, and it's it's such a human nature thing, at the end of the cycle, what are we seeing? We're seeing a bigger grab for power, like more authoritarianism and more sort of centralized desire to control everything. And it's kind of it's kind of like the last gasp of that old cycle that's that's trying to hang on, but but we know that probabilities favor it's not going to work. Like their their plans aren't going to work, their schemes aren't going to work because the cycles aren't going to support it anymore. They're just not going to support that centralized control. So Ben, I, you, th th this all sounds really interesting, and I know I know um, in in the past you've been you've been focused. I want to take it more to the markets. Yep. You've been more focused on oh, is is you're going to see a ben the, the gold benefit, and which obviously it did. We broke out to all new, fresh, all time highs, and we're sustaining those highs. Uh, you were very bullish the dollar at that time, maybe due to monetary policy or whatever the case may be, it's, uh, you know, going back, you'd have to go back a year and some change to, to, to see our interview, but you were bullish and constructive on the dollar. Where are you seeing the markets now? Because I have to also say that stocks are much higher, significantly higher than where they were back last time we spoke. And I'm not, I can't remember based on my notes, exactly what you're thinking about the markets, but where do you, what do you think happens in the stock market? What do you think happens in precious metals from here? Yeah, it's it's an interesting exercise because capital flows move markets, right? Where money money goes, wherever it goes, that's going to help push up a market. And if it leaves a market, that's going to bring it down. The, the fortunate thing about being in the United States and having, you know, you and me being citizens and having our assets here is we are the tallest midget in the game. Right. We, we all have fiat currencies, but ours is the best. And so while ultimately the fiats are all probably all going to fail, the U.S. dollar will be the place where people will come and it'll be the last one, last man standing. So I still am very bullish on the dollar. If you look at, you know, I look at big picture charts. I like to look at monthlies and weeklies and like dailies is the short time frame for me. But the um, if you look at the monthly, it looks like we're doing an, a nice little triangle here where for the last year, year and a half, we've just been bouncing, you know, in a tighter and in it's sort of a winding up range. And it looks to me like we're winding up for the next move higher in the dollar. You know, it's probably gonna be from a lower level, shorter term, you know, where we, you know, because I, I listen to you guys every morning on the um, on the morning edge and your, the shows that you do um, uh, with, your, with your other group. And I do think that, you know, there's some trading opportunities to be in the dollar, but longer term, I'm still bullish on the dollar. I'm really bullish on gold, bullish on silver, bullish on Bitcoin, because they're all they're all ways of expressing sort of a lack of confidence in the system, you know. And yeah, the dollar being the exception, saying 
if I'm if I'm gonna be have to be in a fiat, I want to be in the strongest possible fiat I can be in. Right. I mean, I'm, I mean, if I if I leave if I leave the United States and I go to Mexico or I go to Peru or I go to Italy, I mean, I'm still it's dollars against their local currency. So you're still saying that the, it's it is the least dirty shirt in the hamper, at least at yep. this point. And um and but gold and Bitcoin um relatively uh, relative to any other fiat currency or and silver to too. perform and, and silver. silver. OK, yeah. now silver is more of an industrial metal. Um, What makes you so constructive on silver? I just think silver is going to be like the poor man's gold. Yeah. You know, if, if you can't pay, you know, three thousand dollars an ounce or twenty seven hundred dollars an ounce for gold, can you pay 40 bucks an ounce for silver or 50 for silver? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the uh, that's always the the, the argument there. Um, when all precious metals go up, it did you know silver is gonna by 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 uh, tooth and nail, it's gonna be dragged higher, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I I think that's gonna be well. the interesting thing to me, and I know I've heard you guys talking about this is the strength in copper. I love copper. I still like copper, um, and I still like the commodity complex because I do think we're in a period of where demand may not go up a lot, but supply is not going up and supplies are going down in a lot of these commodities. So the what I what we saw in cocoa over the last year and a half, I think is a preview of what could happen in a lot of different commodities. Yeah. So, and, and that's, that's the, the, I was actually going to go there. I mean, you know, you got commodities, we're in an, obviously an inflationary cycle and um, you know, you, you keep your, you keep your, you know your 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 finger on the pulse of the of the consumer and and people around you and 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 the economy in general. Um, what kind of environment are we in? I mean, we're 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 in a really sticky inflationary environment. Do you think that that it's going to play into your epic cycle overall? Because like if I'm if I live month to month, paycheck to paycheck, and I and prices are not going down, I, I the, the, at some point there's going to be social unrest. I would think, right? Yep. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think a year ago, year and a half ago, when we spoke, you know, everyone was worried about the economy, but tried, uh, if you tried to make a reservation for dinner at a nice place, couldn't get it. You had to do it a month in advance. Uh, airline tickets sold out. Try to try to fly somewhere to a vacation spot when everyone, you know, when, when their holidays are there, everything's sold out. And I said, I don't see people slowing down yet. Then this was a year ago. Now, fast forward to this time, you know, grocery prices are up more, auto insurance is up, homeowners, insurance, everything is up dramatically. I mean, I don't care what the inflation figures are. If you go to a grocery store where you have to do things to survive and live like a normal life in this society, everything's gone up tremendously. I mean, when you used to go to a restaurant, you'd spend a nice place, you'd spend 50 bucks a person. Now it's 100 bucks a person. You go to the grocery store, you couldn't walk out of there without spending 20 or $30. Now it's $100. No matter what you get, you throw a few items in your cart, you're at $100. And so that, and the gas prices are up again. So all these sort of things are contributing to the erosion of people's confidence and their belief in the future. And it's going to have ramifications. And 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 that's not just related to a 400 year cycle. I was looking at at um, at cycles, and and one of the key things about how cycles work is that there are bigger cycles like the epic cycle, which is 400 year, and then you can go down, and there are cycles that are you know 30 minutes or uh, an hour, the hourly cycles, and things that are that short. So it's the concept of if you ever looked inside a watch, all the little wheels inside the wheels that are turning, and if we look now there are a confluence of major cycles and shorter term cycles, like five-year cycles now. Uh, if you go back five years, you got the, roughly the 2020 high before the COVID crash, 10-year cycle. If you go back 10 years, there was a high in 2015 before we had a sharp pullback into the election that year. 15-year cycle puts us back into the great financial crisis period. A 20-year cycle puts us into the 2004-2005 period right after the, the dot-com crash and 9-11. Um, and uh, a 50-year cycle puts us into the 70s, like the 73, 74 lows. So, I mean, a lot of these things are coming together, all sort of lining up 
into this time frame, which is why I think it's going to be it's going to be chaotic, but it's also going to present tremendous opportunity for for good traders like yourself and people that are prepared and can and know that they know their levels, they understand technical analysis, and they'll step in when stuff's falling apart because that's that's kind of the environment that I think we're going to be this chaotic um, reshuffling of the decks as we get ready for the next cycle. All right. So with, with this chaos is going to bring opportunity then. Huge. Huge opportunity. All right. So let, let's, you know, I, I want to go back to the economy a little bit. And 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 I know you follow, you know, you 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 follow the cycles. Do you have any opinions about um, like let's just talk about interest rates, where they currently stand and 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 what does that mean for the consumer, like real estate and 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 you know. Uh, just people in general. I mean, our real estate market stagnant because we, you know, obviously there's people that own their homes that, uh, you know, financed them below sub three percent, and but people still have to buy homes and inventories are still low, but rates are so high. What what is this all? Put it all together for us. It's interesting because every every crisis in the markets ha starts with debt somewhere. Right. So debt has to blow up somewhere or cause problems in the system to get the the, the panic and the crisis really going in. Um, in the great financial crisis, it was mortgage debt. Right. And uh, and housing and real estate. If you go back to the 80s, it was in the uh, the oil patch and in Texas, you know, a lot of the a lot of the excesses were there. Um, so I looked at. Where have the excess in borrowing been in this cycle? And I keep coming back, Blake, to sovereign debt, governments. Who's issued more debt than governments in this cycle? Nobody. Yeah. And it's not just the U.S. It's all over the world. So I don't know how it's the, 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 the cycle is going to play out and the crisis is going to pay out, play out. But I just think it's going to be sovereign debt related. And maybe it's sort of a domino thing, like in um, in remember in the UK a year or so ago when they had the guilt crisis, but it wasn't about the guilt at first. It was about oh the budget and uh, the the way that they were doing running deficits and things, and so people started selling treasuries, and then people had to have forced selling of treasuries to meet margin calls, and it just sort of cascaded. Yeah. You can see something like that happening with treasuries where maybe it's um maybe it's the the commercial debt uh you know commercial real estate issue that that starts the problem and because they can't liquidate those loans or they can't get anybody to buy them at a decent bid they start selling treasuries and with the treasuries going down it forces other people to have collateral issues and and you know you get that sort of uh piranha effect going through the market um, I don't know. That's again, it's just something that I surmised and and it's based on odds. If you look at where was the excess in debt in this cycle, it's government, it's sovereign. Right. And that's and, maybe where the problem is going to happen. Wow. Well, you know, it's a, it's a lot to a lot to consume, Ben. And uh, and, and I want to re reemphasize with our, our listeners right now and our viewers that that this this cycle that you that that you see where, that you talk about that we're in the midst of and and we're 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 in a maybe tumultuous time that we're we're in right now there are upsides to this right it's it there are upsides because it's more of a more of a you know reset if you will and you, i guess i should use that word reset i think is the right word so it's in any just think of the seasons right you have um you have spring where things grow. You have summer where you get, you know, the 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 fruit and the, the vegetables and everything comes out of the ground. You have the fall where you harvest it. And then you have the winter where it dies. And then it starts again in spring. And that's all a cycle is, is that we are going through the latter part and finishing up a cycle. And then we have to go through the winter to get to the next spring. So it's not it's not an end of the world. It's just a major change in the world that I can honestly say, and without hyperbole, nobody alive on Earth has experienced this before. 
Well, this is it sounds like this is going to be a major cycle that we're experiencing because it's something we haven't seen in in our lifetimes. And uh, so we need to be prepared for it. Um, Ben, you know, I love I love listening to you. I love when uh, when when we bring you on for interviews on our other show, on the face show uh, through through our other community. But um, how do traders follow your work that this might be the first experience with Mr. Ben Maldonado? I'm I just post on Twitter. So um, I have a Twitter handle and I post and I, I share my work with people. You know, I don't, I'm not a, a subscription guy or anything, Substack guy or any of these guys. I'm, I'm just sharing my work and hopefully it can help people and avoid some of the pitfalls that we've all as traders have all had to go through, you know, making the mistakes. And then you learn if, um, if the work that I put out there can help some people, I'm really happy. Well, Ben, I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on the Trader Summit. And if you really uh, liked what Ben had to say, make sure you give him a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below. It's free to do both of those things. You don't have to pay to subscribe here at Trader Summit. And then also, um, you know, jump in the comments below. If you have, uh, if you have, you've been doing some cycle work, or maybe you have some questions about the Epic Cycle, jump down in those comments and ask Ben. Ben, I, I tell you, it's it's been way too long, and that's my fault. I'll take I take full blame. <laughs> Um, but I will look forward to catching up with you uh, sometime in the in the coming months again, and we'll we'll see where we're at as we uh, get into summer. Excellent, excellent, Blake. Thank you for having me. I always uh, appreciate spending time with you, and I always learn something and and figure out another angle. And because we, no matter how good you are in this business, you can always get better. And and there's no monopoly on good ideas. No, there isn't. And just getting a little bit more of an edge helps everybody, right? Amen. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Ben. And uh, folks, this has been Ben Malnato. And uh, make sure you follow him. You can actually click the link down below. It should, should take you to his Twitter handle. And Ben, I want to thank you for being here. Have a, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks a lot, Blake. You too. Hey, traders. Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell notifications so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.